بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على محمد النبي شهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, We're continuing with the Day of Judgment Aqeedah for Foundations of Islam Unit 7 um, We're going to talk about some hadith of the Prophet وسلم, Some things he told us about the Day of Judgment Insha'Allah So the Prophet وسلم, he said I am your predecessor at the Lake Fount, the Kalthar. And some men amongst you will be brought to me. And when I will try to hand them some water, they will be pulled away from me by force. Whereupon I will say, O oh Lord, these are my companions. But then the Almighty will say, You do not know what they did after you left. They introduced new things into the religion after you. And that's in Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari. So the Prophet is telling us that he'll be at the the howl that he has this howl or kalthar, this water source for us on the day of judgment. And only the believers will be able to drink from that water source. And it will be a relief because we'll all be thirsty. And they say, when you drink from that water, you'll never feel thirsty again. And the Prophet ﷺ tries to give some to some believers because they, they look like they're Muslims. They look like they're believers. And the angels stop him. And he says, oh Allah, these are my, my, my followers. These are my people. And the angels will tell him, no, you don't know what these people did after you were gone. And these are people that changed the religion, right? People that did bid'ah. And we talked about bid'ah before, but it shows us how dangerous it is when, when dangerous it is for people to, to change, make changes into this deen. In the next hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, the people will be assembled on the day of resurrection on a white plain with a reddish tinge like the loaf of white bread with no mark set up for anyone. So he tells us that the earth will be changed here in this hadith. It will be changed into this clear white plain. We'll be all gathered there together, all of humanity. Right? And then the Prophet ﷺ says that, Allah the exalted and high would say to one who shall have to undergo the least torture on the day of resurrection, would you like to give as a ransom if you had all the worldly riches? And this person would say, yes. Of course. And Allah would say to him, When you were taken out of the loins of Adam, I demanded from you something easier than this. All you had to do was not associate anything in worship with Allah. And he says, I think he said that I would not cause you to enter hellfire, but you defied and attributed divinity to others besides Allah, besides God. And that's from Sahih Muslim, as was the, the one before. So Allah here is, is talking about the person getting the least torture on the Day of Judgment, right? They're getting the least amount of, of, of punishment. Allah will say, if you had all the riches in the earth, would you give it up to get out of this, this punishment? And they'll say, of course, yes, anything. And Allah will say, all I asked for you to do was to only worship God alone. Right? That's all a human has to do to be saved. Is to not worship anything besides God or along with God. Right? This Tawheed. Right? That's, that's the message of all the prophets, right? It's to give God his right that only he be worshiped. He created us, he provides for us, right? That's all we have to do. And then the Prophet said that when a non believer does good, he's made to taste its reward in this world. And so far as the believer is concerned, Allah stores the reward for his virtues for the hereafter and provides him sustenance in accordance with his obedience to him. So here Allah tells us that out of his justice, even when people that don't believe in God, when they do good on the earth, they're rewarded in this life. So maybe they'll be successful in their business. Maybe they'll have a nice family. Maybe they'll have a lot of good things happen to them in their life. And that'll be the reward. Because they didn't have any belief in the hereafter. They didn't believe in God. They didn't do anything for the hereafter. They don't have anything for them in the hereafter. But Allah says, as for the believers, He will reward them in the next life. He'll save up their reward so that they get it when it really matters. Right? In the afterlife. But also He rewards us here as well. Allah talks, uh, the Prophet talks about uh, Jannah, about paradise. And He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He says, Observe moderation in doing good deeds. And if you fail to observe it perfectly, try to do as much as you can do. 
and be happy for none will be able to get into paradise because of their deeds alone. And the Sahaba, when they heard this, they said, well, what about you? Even you, Allah's messenger? And he said, no, not even I, except that Allah wraps me in his mercy. And bear this in mind, that the deed loved most by Allah is the one done most consistently, even if it be small. So here we get an idea about the Prophet Sallallahu telling us like to be moderate in our deeds, right? Not trying to go and burn ourselves out with doing good deeds, but do deeds that we can handle at a moderate pace. Of course, we have to do our obligations um, and we should try to do extra good, as much good as we can, but do it in a way that we're not burning ourselves out. Like be moderate in our, in our performance. And the Prophet Sallallahu says too also that the deeds that Allah loves most are the deeds that we're consistent in. That we can do them again and again and be do them well, consistently. Right? He likes that better, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, than if we have a burst of iman and we do some huge good deed and then we don't ever do it again uh, for a long, long time or ever again maybe in our lives. Right? Allah prefers us to have some consistent connection and worship with Him. He prefers that. And He also reminds us that our deeds aren't what actually saves us. Because honestly, we can never worship Allah as he deserves. And most of us don't even worship Allah as well as we could. Like we don't even do our best, even live up to our potential. So our good deeds aren't enough to give us an eternal, earn us an eternal paradise. Um, except that Allah, out of his mercy, out of his generosity, out of him seeing us struggle to connect with him and have a relationship with him and to worship him, he gives us Jannah out of his mercy and generosity. What a great uh, Lord that we have, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another hadith in Muslim, the Prophet says, I was in the company of Allah, or the, sorry, Sahaba says, I was in the company of Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he gave a description of paradise. And he concluded with these words. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there will be bounties which the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, and no human heart has ever perceived. And then he recited this verse uh, uh, that translated as, They forsake their beds, calling upon their Lord in fear and in hope, and they spin out of what we have given them. So no soul knows what refreshment of the eyes is hidden for them as a reward for what they did. <coughs> and then Allah, or then the Prophet ﷺ says, uh, it's also in Sahih Muslim, he says, There would be an announcer in paradise. He would make this announcement. Verily, they're in store for you is everlasting health and that you should never fall ill and that you would live forever and not die at all and that you would remain young and never grow old and that you would always live in affluent circumstances and never become destitute as the words of Allah, the exalted and glorious are and it would be announced to them. This is the paradise you have been made to inherit for what you used to do. So here the Prophet ﷺ tells us about the Jannah and some of the great, great rewards that we have. That we're healthy all the time, right? We never get sick. You don't even have to worry about it, right? And we see that right now, right? We're so worried about our health right now. Um, in Jannah, that's something that's secure for us. We're never sick. And we never have to worry about death, right? There's, we, there's no way we die in the Jannah. And we never get old. We stay young and fit and healthy all the time, all of our, our time in Jannah forever. And we never run out of our materials, right? We are affluent all the time. We're always rich in, in paradise, right? We never have a shortage. We never run out. We never use up all of our reward. It's there for us eternally. So there's no anxiety, no worry that the things are going to end. It's the perfect uh, environment, the perfect place for us. Assalamu alaikum.